If you're in the startup world, you must know about WeWork. Chances are you're actually sitting in one right now. Officially, the We company was founded in 2010 and very quickly expanded to 836 locations as of this recording, 15,000 employees, and over half a million members. It's the bright and classic startup unicorn story, except it isn't. In mid-2019, the company filed the documentation to prepare for an IPO, that's an initial public offering, or to begin trading in the stock market. This required them to publish their so far secret financials. Once the world had a look at their numbers, everyone quickly realized that the company founder and CEO, Adam Newman, had been selling smoke and mirrors. The company was not only far, far from being profitable, but Adam had been living an eccentric executive life that was costing the company millions. The CEO was ousted. The valuation of the company went from a shocking $47 billion to an estimated $80 billion or less. And SoftBank, their lead investor, is preparing to rescue slash acquire slash take control of the company to save it from oblivion. In this video, we're going to dig into the Wii company story, the rise and downfall, and of course, what lessons we can learn from them. This is a new series we call Startup Forensics. Mm. Push it aside. Notice anything strange? Stomach, liver, lungs. This gory story started in 2008 when Adam Newman and Miguel McLevin established a co-working space in Dumbo. They called it Green Desk. They laid out around 100 spaces and rented them from $350 to $2,400 a month. And the business boomed. They quickly sold Green Desk to the landlord of the building and used the seven-figure acquisition money to start a new space in Soho, that's 2010, under the name WeWork. This is when Adam's fundraising abilities started shining. That year, Manhattan property owner Joel Schriber invested $15 million in the company for a reported 33% stake. That means that the post-money valuation of WeWork at this point was already at $45 million. It's unclear how much traction they had at this point, but needless to say, this is already a pretty high valuation for such an early company. Mr. Schriever's quotes on that was, I didn't negotiate. I said, yes, I loved Adam's energy the new unicorn on the block. Fast forward to 2014, WeWork was already the fastest growing lease company space in New York, according to Forbes. The company expected to make $150 million that year and $400 million the year after. New locations were launching with 80% occupancy. They bragged to the press about their operation margin 30%. This will be important later. JP Morgan, the Harvard Corp, and billionaire Mord Zuckerman joined as investors on a massive $150 million round of funding, which closed in February 2014. It effectively valued the company at $1.5 billion. Let's stop for a second now to talk about the why. WeWork was charging $350 per month or so for a shared desk, or around $650 a month per person for a dedicated desk. This is crazy expensive if you think about it on a per square foot basis. However, when you factor in the cost of actually renting an office in New York City at two, three, four, four, five, or 10 person team can still save money by going with a WeWork space. We have one and we see the savings. Think about it, negotiating a three year lease and doing the deposit, office furniture, decorations, internet, utilities, phone systems, compliance and other paperwork required to operate an office in the city, office manager, mail handling. If you're focused on building a business, trust me, you don't want the distraction of having to run an office or figuring out how to make it look good. Plus there's the intangible value of people a community. I truly believe that surrounding yourself with other entrepreneurs, creators, and brilliant minds have echoes in your own performance. WeWork was all about the happy hours and the community events to bring in like-minded people together. Deskmag.com, a site dedicated to tracking co-working trends, estimated that around 5,900 shared office spaces had launched in 2014, astronomical increase over the 300 that were tracked by 2009. Fewer than 10,000 people working in co-working locations back then that number had turned to 260,000 people by 2014. It's the perfect mix. Fast growth, a fast growing market, a good chance of becoming a market leader, and the founder that can raise money. Tech companies versus non-tech companies. Let's get back to that $1.5 billion valuation. The valuations of tech companies and tech startups are very different from traditional businesses, mostly because of potential. Traditional businesses can be valued based on the assets that they own, based on their revenue and their profits 
also known as EBITDA. You can look into the valuations of some traditional companies that trade publicly and see how these numbers are more or less correlated. But then take a look at Amazon. Amazon reported $232 billion in revenue in 2018 with a net income of $10 billion, just $10 billion of net income profits. Its market cap, when the results were published, $820 billion. Why? Because Amazon is a tech company. It's not making any profit now because it's focused on owning the world, literally. E-commerce, grocery, streaming, web services, over 50% of the internet runs on Amazon and it's continuing to grow. Investors are betting on Amazon because of the tech nature of the business. Tech products have high margins. Amazon's business and market share will allow it to generate massive margins when it chooses to do so. But for now, the focus is on expansion and investors want to buy in on that future bet. So the point here is, Tech companies with the premise of these large profits have easier access to capital, certainly compared to boring non-tech companies whose margins are unlikely to grow. This is why WeWork did everything it could to position itself as a tech company, because tech companies are cool, and more importantly, they have access to cheap capital. Buzzwords like physical social network or artificial intelligence to glean insights about buildings. These are the keywords that WeWork used to throw around. We'll get back to this in a second. Investors. This is where SoftBank comes in. SoftBank is a Japanese multinational conglomerate that owns a massive stake in companies like Alibaba, Yahoo Japan, Uber, Slack, Compass, among many, many others. In 2017, SoftBank announced the Vision Fund, the world's largest private equity fund with a capital of $93 billion. SoftBank first committed $3.1 billion in new funding to WeWork in 2017. They intended to invest this money in companies developing technologies in line with the global artificial intelligence trends, including sectors as finance and transportation. Money for the fund came from sources such as the Public Investment Fund of Saudi Arabia, that's the kingdom's leading sovereign wealth fund, and companies such as Apple, Qualcomm, Foxconn, and Sharp. SoftBank became WeWork's most crucial investor and doubled down round after round, leading new rounds of funding, leveraging and convincing other investors to join, and pushing WeWork's valuation up to $47 billion for their last 2019 round. This easy capital allowed WeWork to run initiatives such as Rise by We, a wellness luxury gym concept that's run by Adam Newman's wife, We Grow, a private school for kids three to 10 years old, and We Live, a co-living concept in high rent areas. Leaked internal documents from 2014 stated that We Live was projected to make up to 21% of WeWork's revenue by 2018. But of course, it didn't. And all three initiatives mostly failed and have been phased out. The downfall. Prior to an IPO, companies release public filings with the purpose of getting investors excited and interested in joining and purchasing company stock as part of this transaction. An IPO in the end is a round of funding. The company seeks to raise additional funding from new investors and the shares are offered publicly. WeWork released its S1 filings on August 14th, 2019. The moment the world had a chance to look at these numbers, everyone started realizing how much of a bubble this was. WeWork was not a tech company. It was a real estate company with some tech. And for a real estate company, these numbers don't make sense. In 2018, it generated $1.8 billion in revenue, but spent a total of $3.7 billion. That's losses of $1.9 billion. It had losses of $900 million for the first half of 2019, and there was no path to profitability. Moreover, it needed the money from the IPO to continue operating, or it would be bankrupt in a matter of months. There was no investor interest. A couple of weeks after their financials were made public, pressure started building on top of Adam's role. Some disturbing news came to light, like the fact that Adam borrowed money against his own stock and used it to purchase properties that he would then lease to the company. What the fuck? Or that he registered the name We under his name to then sell it to the company for $6 million. Also in 2014, when investor demand was high, he managed to negotiate shares with 10 times the voting shares of other investors. With a disclosed personal goal that he wanted to become the world's first trillionaire, Adam convinced the board to buy a private jet that he would use to travel. In total, he borrowed over $740 million against his own stock and sold a tremendous amount of his shares in the company. A very rare and suspicious activity, of course. With new revelations coming to light, Newman was forced to step down, and he did so on September 25th. The IPO intention was withdrawn by the company and major layoffs were announced by October 3rd. 4,000 employees were expected to be cut, which represents over a quarter of the company's staff. Having lost investor trust, 
interest and with fast shrinking cash reserves, the company had no choice but to seek profitability as the real estate company that they always were. Two new co-CEOs were brought in, the company Jet was sold, and the company is seeking to get rid of some of their unrelated acquisitions, such as the company Meetup. The future of WeWork is certainly uncertain. While we can't call it dead yet, the clock is ticking for them to get back on track.